Welcome back to Sports Center. Many professional athletes don't just make good money, they give it away, lending their names and their wallets to those less fortunate. And while it's not hard to sympathize with the cause, two players on the Rams wanted to be able to empathize with an issue we see across the country. Sarah, NFL players live a lifestyle of nice cards and huge houses. They play a violent game that requires toughness. But for Chris Long and William Hayes, they wondered whether that toughness required to succeed in the NFL was good enough to take to the streets. In this week's SC feature, as told by Long and Hayes, they gave up the glamour for the grim of having nothing. This is Essie Featured. This is the power of sports. Five hundred and seventy thousand people in America are homeless on any given day. What do you think when you see them on the streets? Have you ever wondered what got them there? Does it matter? Do you look the other way? I kind of did until now. Excuse me, partner. You spare maybe 50 cents? I greatly appreciate it. That's me, Chris Long of the St. Louis Rams, and that's my teammate, William Hayes. Wilson pulls it down, trying to escape, sacked again. William Hayes. For every sack we get, chased by Chris Long and sacked. Our defensive line donates a thousand bucks to a local homeless resource facility, the St. Patrick Center. But to be honest, I never personally visited the place. William has. He's been into this cause for a long time now. William had an idea and it came up pretty organically. We were just kind of sitting on the bus one day, asked some folks that were homeless and William was like, I wonder if we could handle that. You know how hard that would be. To raise awareness for this issue, William put together a plan. I'm going to be trying to live the whole homeless experience uh, with my best friend slash teammate, Chris Long. Just trying to feel the experience of homelessness. The Rams community outreach staff helped us execute it. I just know like, if there is an uncomfortable situation or if something doesn't feel safe enough. We were given secondhand clothing and makeup to hide our identities, accompanied by an off-duty cop for security and followed by an undercover camera crew we were given $4 each, no cell phones, and began to experience life on the streets. How weird does this feel right now? I was worried about us being recognized as NFL players. Instead, we drew looks as strangers in a surprisingly tight-knit homeless community. Hey, where's all this dope from? Down the road. Huh? Down the road. Keener Plaza. Keener Plaza, but where'd you come from before you got to Keener Plaza? Oh. If we were in nicer clothes or uh, our appearance was different, maybe we wouldn't be stopped or uh, kind of questioned the way we were. You're not a normal, quote unquote, person anymore. Gosh, I hate when people stare at me, man. It's amazing, though, when that, when that cop went to talk to me, just how unsettled that felt, you know what I mean, compared to, like, if a cop normally talks to me yeah. walking down the street. That was an eye-opener for me. For William, he just wanted to close his eyes during the day. We knew we wouldn't be getting a good night's sleep. 20 minutes up. Yeah, up. Oh, With $8 between the two of us, our instinct was to panhandle for a few extra bucks. And we did, in the shadow of where we play on Sundays. God bless you, man. God bless you. The panhandling for me was an eye-opening experience. Um, I didn't get a dollar, but Chris came out there and he stole the show. Wow, that guy gave me five dollars. That could make somebody's day. That's unbelievable. Maybe my look probably didn't sell it. I mean, I don't want to necessarily say because he was white and I was black, but uh, I mean, it's probably because I, I looked a little bit more aggressive. I honestly believe, and I'm not being naive, I think Will's main problem was he was on the wrong side of the street. When you panhandle, you should be on the side of the street of the driver's side, and Will was on the passenger side. Can you believe that Can you believe what I just got? Yeah. Six dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. With the extra cash, we could splurge for burgers instead of a free meal at a soup kitchen. Still, on this day, we felt what it was like to stretch a budget. Look at that 
Thing, huh? So, See if you can get three for five. Is that mm -hmm. cheese on there? Yeah, let's see if you can get, get them without cheese. Well, so you want to try four for five then? No, dude. <laughs> As the sun began to set, we knew we had to find a place to sleep. Shelters are a great resource for some, but they're not always safe. We were instructed to avoid confrontations, and with that in mind, we made our way to the outskirts of downtown and found a prized commodity on a chilly night. This ain't too damn bad right here. We decided to um, catch a bonfire. We realized nobody was around. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's up, man? Just passing, man. Sorry, sir. Keeping the fire going for you. No, dude. Okay. No, it's not an issue. No, I'll just leave my barrel alone. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. We was in the wrong to think that we could come there and potentially make that our place to stay just for a night. Not far from there, we found what we thought would be a warm place to sleep. So it's pretty damn cold. It'll be warmer in here. That's what I'm saying. I hope there's nobody in here. Mansion. Once I get settled, I'm not bad. But it's fucking cold. I'm about to die right now. The truck really didn't keep us warm at all. It, it was the worst night I've ever had in my life. For sure. My body hurts so bad right now. Our life on the streets ended after one last long walk across town. I'm glad it rained just to get that experience. I ain't yeah. going to tell you that, Chris. On the way back home, we took a ride through the places we had been the day before. That was the guy who told us to uh, get lost last night because we were trespassing. How about we go talk to him? Yeah. Man? Well, man. We just, like I said, we just wanted to apologize, yeah. man. And, and, and just say hello. It's nice all to meet good. You, man. It's all good. Yeah. This is Marty. He's made his home in this empty building for several years. You got to be worried about everything. Yeah. You know, every little thing that happens. Well, I used to have one of the biggest record companies in St. Louis, and I caught a case. Yeah. Went to prison. My old lady divorced me and sold all my shit. And I had some DWIs and couldn't get my license back. So. Marty represents a portion of displaced Americans identified as chronically homeless. These buildings will be torn down soon. Marty and several others were told that they have to leave. Chris, come on. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Including Nancy, who's been away from her family and her children for more than two years. I'm worried about that little uh, the little guy right there. Right on. If I was to um, put you in the stand stay for a month. You guys would be good? Would yeah. that help you all out a lot? Yeah. OK, we'll we're do that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely going to do a stand stay. I'll split it with you. Yeah. I haven't thought about doing maybe even two months. Let's do two months. I'll take the second. You take the first. Yeah, that's fine. When you go through it, you, you sit there and you listen a little bit and you converse with people. You realize that the causes of homelessness are, are so multiple and so layered. What I do know more about now is the experience of being homeless and you know just what these people might feel for just a day. That week, Marty and Nancy said goodbye to their community and were moved to temporary housing. Nancy, you ready for this? I am. <laughs> For two months, they wouldn't have to worry about finding a place to sleep, their safety, or their next meal. Oh, uh, I'm going to get a good night's rest. That's the first thing that's going through my mind. Sleep. Get cleaned up and sleep. After three weeks, Marty's found some work as a construction foreman, and Nancy's been getting outreach support. How you doing? Good, and you? It's good to see you. I've been recovering from being out two years. It, it, it takes a toll on a person. So all seven of your kids live in uh, Illinois? 
But that's where grandparents and family is at. I don't talk about them a lot, but okay. boy, I sure do want to get back with them. Uh, yeah. I understand that. I wish I could say there's going to be a happy ending here, but we won't know for some time. I finally did visit the St. Patrick Center that the Rams partner with. I can't stop thinking about the people that work in these places tackling these issues every single day. I'll come back with them next time for sure. Now when I see a homeless person, I see lives on detour. Mothers and fathers struggling to be reunited with their children. Faces that have been deprived of sleep and shelter. Individuals living in fear and loneliness. Human beings looking to reclaim their dignity. Thanks to William's idea, I just can't look away anymore. That was this week's SE Featured presented by Dove Men Plus Care. For more on William and Chris's experience, you can check out the companion article that's over on ESPN.com.